When you're getting started with Home Assistant, one of the things you might find yourself wanting to do is copy someone else's configuration. But knowing where to put that code in your configuration files can be somewhat of a challenge. That's where packages can help. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at packages, how to set them up, and how to use them. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. I wasn't sure that a video dedicated to packages was really needed anymore. Building advanced automations and scripts in Home Assistant via the UI has gotten much easier and much better than it was when I started in 2015. Heck, it's much better today than it was in 2020. But some recent comments on some of my recent videos where I discuss how I use packages made me rethink that position. And the reality is that even today, you may run across a cool automation script or some other idea from somebody else's configuration or blog about Home Assistant, and you want to put that code in your configuration. And that's where packages come in handy. Packages are really just general purpose YAML files in your Home Assistant configuration that can contain, well, pretty much anything. I use them mainly to organize my configuration around specific domains. For example, in my packages directory, you'll find one named security.yaml. And inside this file is everything related to my security system in Home Assistant. The camera one contains all of my camera integrations. And as you can see, I have quite a few of these in my packages directory because they allow me to put everything related to these domains in a single file, making them much easier to find when I need to go update an automation or some other piece of the configuration. For example, let's look at my weather.yaml file. This file contains everything related to my weather integrations. At the top is this Home Assistant section, and it may look familiar. We'll get into more of that here in just a minute. I also have a group section where I've defined any groups that I need for my weather integrations. We've got input bullions, utility meters that track my daily and weekly rainfall, quite a few sensors, automations, and of course scripts. Now, typically in your configuration, you're going to define each of those sections only once, and it will usually be in your configuration.yaml file. In fact, in most cases, if you try to add them outside of your configuration.yaml file, you're going to get an error. But with packages enabled, you can reuse these sections in each one of your packages. And you can even use those handy reload options under your server configuration menu to reload each of these sections without having to restart your Home Assistant instance. Want to reload some input bullions you just updated in one of your packages? Just come over to the server configuration menu Scroll down to input booleans and click the link to reload them. No restart needed. But of course, it's not all perfect. Any of the entities you define in these packages cannot be edited via the UI options. And that means you're going to have to edit the YAML yourself. A good text editor like Visual Studio Code will definitely make that easier, but it's still going to be daunting. And in some cases, the newer debug features added into Home Assistant aren't going to work with some of these automations and scripts and other entities. And speaking of debug, the error messages sometimes can be cryptic, like this one. This makes it look like the error is in one of my scripts, in my scripts.yaml file. But the error was actually in one of my packages. It took me forever to track that down. But the configuration checker could save you some time. Just check often and you'll be fine. To enable packages, just jump into your favorite text editor and head over to your configuration.yaml file. For this video, I'm using the file editor add-on on my test instance. And the change you want to make to your configuration.yaml file is here in the Home Assistant section. We just need to add the line, packages colon space exclamation include underscore dir underscore named space packages. The name at the end of this file is the name of the folder Home Assistant should look in for your packages. And the name doesn't have to be packages. All this line does is tell Home Assistant it should look in the folder we have named, in this case packages, and load all of the YAML files it finds in that directory. After you add this line, you'll want to create the actual folder. Just make sure whatever name you used at the end of that line in your configuration.yaml matches the name of the folder you create. 
and this folder goes in your config directory. Using the file editor add-on, we can just come up to the top and click add folder. And once we've created it, we just need to restart Home Assistant, and then we can start using packages. One of the use cases of packages is just creating a file for a collection of entities. For example, if you wanted to build a security system in Home Assistant, you could create a security.yaml file in your packages directory. Then you might add an input select to handle your armed and disarmed states. Then you might want some automations, so you could have an automation section. And if you're like me, you'll probably have a script or two, so just add those under a script heading. The bottom line is you could add all of the entities you need for your security system in this file. And of course, you can use this to grab someone else's configuration and not have to worry about what file those entities go in. If it's already a package, just grab the whole file and download it to your package's directory. But the easiest method might be just to copy and paste. For sure, you could grab any of the code out of one of my packages and get it into your system using the copy and paste method. Like this cuckoo clock I took from Carlo over at vCloud Info. Just head over to my GitHub repo, then drill down into the config folder, then packages. When you find the file you want, in this case cuckoo clock, click on it and then click raw to make sure you don't copy any weird characters. Then copy all of this. Then you just have to jump back into your configuration, create a new file named clock.yaml in your packages folder and paste in the YAML. Then you just have to modify the entities names referenced in that file to match your entities. Then since this package just contains an automation, we can simply go over to our server controls and hit reload automations. And after that, it should be up and running. I hope this gives you an idea of how you could use packages to make your home assistant journey a little less stressful, or at least to make it easier building your smart home using configurations from other people. GitHub is a good source for configuration inspiration, and it's easy to search. For example, if you jump into my configuration at github.com slash the Jeffrey Stone, you'll see a list of topics over on the right. If you click Home Assistant Config, you'll get a list of almost 500 repos that you can browse through. Of course, a lot of these mean you're going to be staring at YAML, but some of these come with lists of devices they have integrated into their Home Assistant, and some even have screenshots of their dashboards. If you poke around in my GitHub configuration and something doesn't make sense, or you want a little more clarification on how something works, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. But I am also working on setting up a Slacker Labs Discord server as well. It just isn't ready yet. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this video. If you want to support Slacker Labs and our mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find a link to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description of this video where you can purchase some of the very t-shirts I wear in these videos. Well, not like the actual t-shirts I'm wearing in these videos, but one that's printed on demand, especially for you. For those that prefer a cashless transaction, you can just let me know that you found value in this video by giving me the finger and hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel, if you haven't already, for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, Go automate the boring stuff.